where we left off uh, we saw how to insert and delete into uh, and from b plus trees and query b plus trees. The next topic is what is called b plus tree file organization. So, if you look at the figures we saw till now b plus tree let us take the original b plus tree figure a long way back. Uh, we had a file storing the data and the b plus tree simply stored pointers to the data. But this is not necessarily the best way of doing things. There are many situations where we may want uh, data to be stored in the leaf node of the b plus tree itself. Okay. Uh, so, this is called a b plus tree file organization. So, this is the figure uh, which I was on just a second ago. So, if you see here the leaf this is a b plus tree it is kind of drawn funnily because it was too wide to fit in one line. So, the leaf nodes had to go over two lines, but it is a plain b plus tree there is nothing special about it. The only difference is at the leaf instead of storing a pointer to a record we are storing the actual record itself. So, a 4 b 8 and these are the actual records there is no pointer. So, the leaf level contains records. Now, there are a few issues that come up if you do this. If the leaf level contains records how many records fit in a node. Uh, if you look at the internal nodes it does not store a whole record it just stores the search key value and a pointer. So, an internal node may be able to store a lot more key values and pointers than the number of records which can be stored in a leaf. So, that is the first difference that the uh, leaf node may have only a few records while internal nodes still have lots of children. The next issue which comes up is what if the records are variable sized how many records will fit in a leaf and the answer in this context is uh, it, this is true even with variable length records uh, with normal b plus trees uh, with variable length keys in normal b plus trees. So, what we do is um, we require that things be half full with data. Okay. So, if there are variable length we may not say that it must have at least n by 2 records, but we will say that at least half of the space in the node must get used. Now, that space may get used for storing long keys it may get used for storing more pointers, uh, but regardless half the space must get used that is the key thing. Uh, and for a b plus tree file organization at the leaf node the same thing holds at least half the leaf space must be used by records. Otherwise, there is nothing special here in terms of insertion deletion algorithms it is standard b plus tree algorithm, but what is this problem solved? It solved the problem that you know earlier we said we assume that the file is sorted on a key, but who is going to keep it sorted on the key? Somebody has to go periodically and sort the file and in fact, uh, even today PostgreSQL does not support b plus tree file organization. You can ask it to sort a file it is called clustering a file. Uh, but after you do insertions deletions to the file the sort ordering can go for a toss maybe approximately sorted, but once in a while you have to say cluster it again, but who is going to do that when are they going to do it. A b plus tree file organization solves the problem because as in when deletions happen uh, the sort order is maintained if you go across leaves the logical sort order is maintained what is not guaranteed is that these nodes are physically sorted on disk that cannot be guaranteed, but there are some tricks which uh, try to keep these things uh, more or less sorted with minimum number of disk seeks as you seek across the leaves of a b plus tree. Uh, you there are tricks to make sure that the number of seeks you require is minimized I do not have time to get into that, uh, but that is used here that is one thing. Uh, the next issue here is that we did not care much about space utilization we said half full is fine because the index is pretty small anyway. Uh, supposing my data is 100 bytes uh, the index space may be uh, may require 10 bytes for the same amount or 12 bytes for that data. So, uh, it is may be 10 percent of the space if uh, it is half full the overhead is maybe uh, 5 to 10 percent of that it is actually b plus trees tend to be closer to two thirds full. Uh, so, the overhead may be only uh, 3 4 percent of the uh, total data size for one index. So, it may not be worth putting too much effort to save 3 or 4 percent, 
but if I am storing big records in the leaf, if it is only half full, I have a problem. Uh, I may be wasting half the space of the file, which can be very large with if there are lots of records. So, there is a trick to imp improve the space utilization, uh, which is uh, when you do splits and merge, you do the following. If I need to split, if I split a node into two, it is going to become half full. I do not want to do that. So, what I will do first is if a node is full and needs to be split, I will first look at its sibling on the left and on the right and say, look, at least one of the siblings, say, say the sibling on the left is not full, I will try to push some values from the node into the sibling. So, redistribution happens not only on deletion, but it can happen on insertion also. So, now when I insert, if the node is full, I redistribute, but there may be a situation where the left sibling, which I only focus on one sibling, left or right, one sibling I, I look at and it is full. I am full, I am over full and my sibling is also full, what to do now? So, at this point I can take data which is two node fulls worth. So, I have two node fulls of data and I split it into three nodes. I uh, sort it and divide it among the three nodes. What can I say about the three nodes? Each will be at least two thirds full. So, what I have just ensured is when I split, the minimum utilization is two by three, it is not half. So, that is for splitting. What about for deletion? Uh, in deletion, what did I do? Uh, I tried to borrow, but if I uh, could not borrow because the sibling is half full, I merged with the sibling. But now, I do not want to go to even half full, I want to stay at two thirds full. So, I am going just under two thirds full, I do not want it to go under two thirds full. So, what do I do? I try to borrow from a sibling and uh, I look at my sibling and it says, no, uh, sure I have some data, take a few keys and now both of us are two thirds full, I am happy. But if my sibling says, no, I do not have enough data. Uh, to give you anything. I am also at the border line of two thirds full, what to do now? And the trick is to ask one more sibling. Between the three of us, can we redistribute data such that all of us stay at two thirds full, then do it. But supposing both the siblings that I look at are at two thirds full and I am under two thirds full. Now, I cannot borrow from either sibling, but here is what I do. I have three siblings, each two thirds full. So, what is the total amount of data? It is two nodes worth. Two uh, three times two by three is two. So, the total data across the three nodes is as much as will fit in two nodes. So, it is very simple. I take three nodes, merge them into two nodes and what I ensure is that on deletion, the utilization never goes under two by three. So, that is uh, what I do. So, insertion and deletion both take care of this and we can get whatever utilization we want. We can uh, look at three siblings instead of two, four siblings instead of three and so forth and push the utilization from two thirds to three fourths to four fifths or whatever. And there is a trade off, there is more I O when I do insertion deletion uh, and the benefit of more I O is better utilization, but at some point it is not worth it. I will not involve too many more siblings. Okay, so, that was one part. The next topic is if I use a B plus tree file organization, it causes a another different problem. My if I have a secondary index, earlier on I said it stores a record pointer. Now, look at this B plus tree file organization. The record is here and I have a secondary index pointing to this page. But now an insert happens, this page is full, it splits. What happens? Half the records in this page move to a new page. Now, if I have a secondary index on the same relation, this half of the page, that, that record, those records may be 50 to 100 records have moved. Now, one insertion here requires 50 to 100 updates on secondary indices. All that is updated is the record pointer changes. So, the index structure does not change, but I have to update 50 to 100 uh, records in uh, index records in another index. 
that may involve 50 to 100 IOs. They may be scattered all over in that index. That's very expensive. I can't afford that. So instead, uh, so this is the problem. This is the reason why PostgreSQL does not have um, uh, B plus tree file organization, and neither did most other databases some years ago. About 10, 15 years ago, many databases one by one started adding B plus tree file organization. And the key trick uh, which they used to solve this record relocation problem with secondary indices is the following. A secondary index no longer stores a pointer to the records. You can't afford to because records move very often. You can't update them. Instead, what a secondary index stores is a primary index search key. Um, now, assuming this is unique, the search key is enough. If it's not unique, we will add some things to make it unique. I'll not go into details. Uh, but the key thing is that when I split the leaf of the B plus tree file organization, no update is required because there were no physical pointers. They only had a search key in the secondary index. That's the good news. Uh, the overhead though is that when I search on the secondary index, I'll search all the way down to the leaf of the secondary index. What I get is not a record pointer. What I get is a primary uh, index search key. Now I come back to the primary index and search down. When I get to the leaf of the primary uh, index here, it's a file organization, I have found the record I want. So if I had a secondary index on the second attribute 9, I'll search down that tree and at the leaf instead of saying point to this node, it'll say the primary key is C, primary index search key is C, uh, sorry D and then when I come down and search for D, I find this record. So there are two traversals uh, but splits are now cheap. A uh, couple more uh, topics which I will go over quickly. Uh, the first topic is called bulk loading and bottom up build. Mm, I would not get into all the details of how this is done, but the key point I want you to notice, what is the cost of doing an insert into a B plus tree? Assuming the tree is very large, it does not fit in memory, I may have to traverse down the various nodes of the tree and then land up at a leaf and insert a value at the leaf. If the tree is much bigger than memory and I have a series of random inserts into a B plus tree, random order, the probability that the leaf I am looking for is in the in memory buffer is small. So most insertions will land up in requiring an IO to fetch the leaf and then an IO to write it back. So two IO operations per insertion. Now if I am inserting a lot of records, this becomes very expensive. Mm. So uh, this is one of the reasons if I told you if you use uh, JDBC, one of the reasons it is slow is that there are overheads to copying it to JDBC and so forth. The other overhead is to uh, up insert into the indices one record at a time. So an alternative to this is uh, what is called bulk loading and most databases support it. And the trick is uh, relatively simple. What they do is when I am inserting a lot of data, they will first sort that data and then insert it in sorted order. Now if I insert in sorted order, uh, then the uh, next record to be inserted will be in the same page for a while perhaps and after the uh, some records are inserted, maybe the next record will move to a subsequent page and so forth. But I will not go back and forth between different leaf nodes, I will just get the thing sorted um, so let me use the whiteboard. Let us say uh, this was the leaf level of a B plus tree and it is divided into multiple blocks and there is an index above that. Those are the internal nodes. I have some new data which I want to insert which is a lot of data. So the first step is sort new data. Uh, by data I mean actually just the entries. What is the entry? It is a search key value and a record pointer. Uh, so I sort that on the search key of this tree. Now the first thing, a uh, few things may go to the first block, the next few may go to the next block, there may be a gap, the next one may go there and so forth. So I will go through the leaf levels of this tree exactly once. Uh, 
Um, and similarly, for the internal nodes, each node will be accessed maybe multiple times uh, consecutively one after the other. And this is a lot more efficient than um, random inserts into the tree. Now, there are, uh, so this is for inserting into a tree. If I am building a B plus tree fresh, uh, there is a further optimization that I can do. What I will do is I will sort all the entries to be created and then build the upper layers of the tree uh, in a special process which is called bottom up construction. I will skip the details. And so, there is this bulk loading and bottom up B plus tree construction. I wanted to expose you to the term, you can read it up later. Uh, the next topic which I will briefly mention is multiple key access. Um, so, here is a small example. I want to find instructors in the finance department with salary 80,000. This is a very uh, idiotic artificial query, uh, but there are more realistic examples where I will look upon two attributes or more attributes. So, what can I do? If I have an index on a department name, I can use that and uh, fetch those instructors and check if their salary is 80,000. If I have an index on salary, I can find instructors with salary 80,000, fetch their records and then check if department name is finance. Uh, a third option is if I have an index on both of these separately, I can use the department name index to find pointers to all records pertaining to the finance department, use the index on salary to find all records with salary 80,000 and now take the intersection of these two sets of pointers to find the final set of instructors in the finance department with salary 80,000. This approach is what uh, web search engines do. Uh, when you give multiple keywords, they will find a list of web pages containing the first keyword, a list of web pages containing the second keyword and then do an intersection of these lists to get your final answer. But there is one other possibility in our context, which is to create an index on a composite key. So, the index could be on department name comma salary. Now, when you have a composite key, you need a ordering. So, all of the B plus tree operations say, is it less than this key, or is it greater than that key? If I have two attributes, how do I do less than greater than comparison? And that is lexicographic. So, if I had values A1, A2, department 1, salary 1 and another one, department 2, salary 2, how do I decide on the sort ordering? So, this is less than that if either A1 is less than B1 or A1 is equal to B1 and A2 is less than B2. That is the standard lexicographic sort ordering. So, I just create an index uh, treating this as one attribute and using lexicographic ordering. Otherwise, the B plus tree algorithms are exactly the same. So, now I can use a combined index on department name salary to find uh, instructors uh, where department name is finance, salary is 80,000. This would be very efficient. Uh, if you contrast with using separate indices um, here, there may be many people in the finance department, there may be many people with 80,000. So, I may spend a lot of effort finding those. Uh, record IDs and then intersect them and I may get very, very few. But if I have a combined index, I can very efficiently find just those which have finance department salary 80,000. It uh, the same index on a composite key can also handle some other queries efficiently. Take this query, department name is finance, salary less than 80,000. That can be handled very efficiently. They are all consecutive records in this search index. Uh, however, I cannot handle efficiently department name less than finance and uh, this should be salary not balance. Okay. So, I cannot handle this efficiently because the records that satisfy this condition name less than finance and balance 80,000 are going to be scattered all over that index. So, it is not possible to find them consecutively and there is a much higher cost to running this query. Whereas, this previous query department is finance salary less than 80,000, they are all consecutive. So, this is very efficient. So, that is how indices on multiple attributes work. Uh, to wrap up this session, I think this is uh, 
Okay, there are two last slides left. Um, the first slide says index definition in SQL. Um, the SQL standard really does not dig into index creation, but most databases have a command like this create index, index name, on relation name, list of attributes. So, here create index, some name, on uh, this is uh, old relation branch, we do not use it anymore. But imagine there is a relation called branch uh, so, uh, with a attribute called branch name. So, you could create an index on that. Uh, what kind of index? By default, most databases would create a B plus tree index, but many will let you control that. You can also drop indices. So, what are the other kinds of indices which exist? There are many, many types, uh, but the popular ones, there is something called bitmap index, uh, which are used in decision support systems. They are not very useful for online transaction processing systems, but they are very nice for decision support. Uh, these are used for attributes with very few distinct values, like gender, um, maybe the, a uh, lot of uh, marketing analysis wants to know the income level of people. They do not want to know your exact salary, but they want to know if you are in socioeconomic level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are only a few different values. Uh, then they may uh, make a decision based on uh, maybe your uh, age, which again they may bucketize into a few categories, not exact age, but age range. So, each of these have only a few distinct values, and a different kind of index is very useful when the number of distinct values is smaller and they are particularly useful for aggregate queries. Tell me how many people are in socioeconomic level 1 in the age bracket 20 to 25 uh, who are male. Uh, so, these kinds of queries or, uh, can be done efficiently using such indices. Um, then there are hash indices uh, which are very widely used for in-memory indexing in inside of databases, but uh, these days they are not common for on-disk indices. And lastly, R trees, somebody had asked a question already about R trees. These are used to index geographical or spatial data, multidimensional data. And as I said earlier, you can efficiently find all shops within a specified region, rectangular circle using R trees. With a B plus tree index, I could build an index on x and y, the coordinates, latitude, longitude. With that, if I say find me uh, what is located at exactly this latitude, longitude, find a shop. Let us say I have lat long for shops. Find me a shop that is located at this lat long. I can use a B plus tree. But if I say find me a shop that is located near this, I cannot do it. If I say find me shops that are located in this rectangle or circle, I cannot do it efficiently using a B plus tree. So, that is the end of that chapter. You know, there is a lot more stuff in the book and in the full version of the slides which I have skipped. What I will do is uh, we are at lunch time, but let me take a few questions, uh, maybe 5, 10 minutes max worth of questions. Uh, and uh, before we do that, your afternoon session today is on web application development using servlets. Uh, so, I think uh, all of you have the background um, and uh, hopefully you know enough Java to manage this. Those of you who do not know Java might have struggled a bit in yesterday's assignment, but we have given templates for yesterday's and today's assignment. So, even if you do not know Java very well, uh, you can take the templates, get a hang of how the language looks like and then modify it to get what you need. So, we can take a few live questions. Okay, Terna Engineering College, Navi Mumbai, please go ahead. I have one question on indexing, sir. Okay. Uh, how many indexes can uh, uh, we have create on a relation? Is there some maximum limit which could uh, impact the performance of the database? Or is there a minimum limit or we can create as many indexes we want like uh, please could you tell something along those lines? Oh, that is a good question. So, every index which you create has two kinds of overhead. First there is a space overhead for storing the index. The second is every update uh, insert delete which affects uh, the attributes uh, you know in updates which affect the index attributes 
as well as any inserts or deletes, all of them have to update all the indices which are relevant. Insert deletes have to update every single index, updates have to index whichever uh, indices are on the updated columns. So, there is a time overhead to keeping all the indices up to date every time an uh, insert delete or update happens. So, there is this part which is performance related. So, you do not want to create indices indiscriminately, you only want to create it if it is useful to you. So, if you have uh, queries which make use of the index, you should create an index. That if you create an index, nobody uses it, but still the price of keeping it up to date is paid by all the inserts, deletes and updates. Uh, so, that is a, a database tuning question. So, there are uh, tools which are offered with the commercial databases, uh, which help you analyze the workload. You, you, you have to somehow collect the workload, which are what are the queries, inserts, deletes, updates which are happening. And based on the workload which you observe, let us say for an hour or a half an hour or a day or whatever, based on that workload, uh, the system can recommend what indices to create or what indices to drop. Uh, so, that is one part of it. The other part of your question is, is there a limit uh, which is imposed by the database? Many databases uh, do have limits on the number of indices they will support. Uh, the reason is that uh, they have some data structures which are more efficient if you assume a maximum number of uh, indices per relation. Uh, so, what is that limit depends on your database. Uh, obviously, you cannot cross that limit, but that limit is an implementation decision. It has nothing to do with the overheads for uh, insert delete, but it may be related in the sense that if you have 30 indices, you are probably paying a high price and they believe that it does not make sense to have more than 30 indices, so they did not bother to support it. Usually, you do not need all that many indices. Yeah, another question. Go ahead. Hello, uh, sir. I have one more question. What kind of storage structure is used to store audio and uh, images files? As you have stored that uh, images are having BLOB data type, but what kind of storage structure is used? Okay. And one more question is that what kind of indexing technique is used for semi structured data? Okay. So, let me answer the first question. What kind of uh, storage structure is used for uh, large objects like images, videos and so on. Now, uh, the first thing is most applications keep these outside of the database. So, they use the file system directly. Now, what if you tell the database to store this? Uh, there are uh, several approaches which are possible. One approach is that the database directly uses the file system to store these things, uh, but that could result in a lot of files. So, uh, that may not be a great idea. Um, another approach uh, which could be used is to uh, use a B plus tree uh, to store blocks where the blocks contain data from these objects. Okay. So, uh, what you are doing is you, you are storing these objects as blocks, uh, but which all blocks are there in a particular object? Uh, you could link those from a B plus tree. So, there is an index on the uh, ID of that object and uh, through that index you can find what all blocks contain uh, data for that object and uh, if the object is large, it may have multiple blocks. You, the, the index will tell you the, the key for that index will be object ID of the object followed by the block number. So, you can fetch uh, the first block, second block and so forth. Uh, so, the database might manage it uh, itself without creating many separate large files. In fact, it turns out that if you create millions of files in the file system, every operation on that file system goes for a toss. We have had a pretty bad experience even with new versions of Linux. If you create uh, let us say 9 million files in a directory, you do ls on that directory, it hangs. It takes minutes for the ls command to even return. You cannot kill it, you cannot do anything. It's terrible. Uh, so, it is usually a bad idea to create millions of little files and the database might choose to uh, put them all in one large file, but uh, keep an index to record uh, which blocks of the file contain uh, blocks of which object. So, that is how uh, large objects would be stored inside of the database. Uh, there are issues in compaction and so on, which we would not get into. Uh, 
Uh, now coming to the other question which is indexing for semi structured data let us say XML and so forth. Um, so, how do you index XML data? So, there are what are called path expressions on XML data and you can build an index to answer a path expression whose tail contains a specified value. Uh, so, there are other kinds of indices in that context. Um, again, we do not have time to get into all the details. There could be keyword indices on semi structured data, there could be indices on paths along with uh, selection on uh, value which is at the tail of the path, and, and there are other types of indices too. So, I'll, I will leave it at that. Okay. Maybe I can take one or two questions from chat. Okay. One of the questions was by default, an index is created on the primary key of the table. Can uh, index can, should we use create index to create additional indices, how are they managed and so forth. So, first of all an index on the primary key is uh, usually essential, because without that index if you insert a record, how do you check if the primary key value has been duplicated. That is an integrity constraint violation which has to be checked. Uh, and the most efficient way of checking it is to have an index on the primary key. So, these are created by default by every database. The second uh, kind of index which is usually automatically created is if you declare a foreign key constraint from R to some other relation S. On relation S you have declared a primary key and index is created already. So, that is not an issue, but on the referencing relation R there is an issue. Supposing I want to delete a tuple from S, I need to know if any tuple in R is referencing that tuple. If it is maybe I you know not maybe I should not allow the deletion on S or if uh, on delete cascade or so on has been specified, I need to find which all records in R are affected and cascade the delete to those records. For all of this, I need an index on R on the foreign key attribute. So, most databases would also create automatically an index on all the foreign key. If you declare any attribute or attributes of R to be foreign key attributes referencing some other relation, an index will automatically be created on the on each foreign key. For each foreign key an index is created. So, these two are the default indices which are automatically created. Beyond this anything you need is up to you. Uh, somebody else has asked a question about what is a column store index in SQL server and where is it used. So, column stores are something which I did not get into, uh, but uh, let me write the word here. So, that people are familiar with this. So, what is a column store? The idea is if I have a relation with multiple tuples, each tuple has multiple columns. Now, all the structures which we saw till now store a row, a record is a row and that is stored in a block. Now, what people found is there are many cases where a relation has many attributes which are rarely used. They might be quite big, uh, and, but they are rarely used. Most of the accesses to some relations happen on only a few of the attributes, and many of them access maybe just one attribute or two attributes. So, if you store a whole record together in a page, if I want to access even one, just one column of that relation, I have to fetch the whole relation, which means I am fetching a lot of columns which never get used. There is a lot of overhead to fetching the columns. So, they said when for decision support queries where this is common, what they did is they broke up the relation slightly differently. They broke it up into columns, let us say this is columns A, B, C, D. I will store all the values for column A in one place, all the values for column B in another place, everything for column C in a third place, column D in a fourth place. I am storing only the value in that column and I am storing it exactly the same order it was stored in the original relation. So, uh, you know updates and so on can cause trouble, there are workarounds to deal with that, let us not worry about those issues. I had a relation stored in this way here, this is called a row store. In contrast in a column store, the data is stored for each column separately. So, there would be one file containing all the values for column A, one file for all the values from column B. Now, one of the key things is you have to be able to know which value from here corresponds to which value from here, you know assuming the uh, 
data sizes are different, this is the 73rd thing here, will correspond to the 73rd thing here, to the 73rd thing there and so forth. Maybe 73rd value is here. Okay, so, these together form one row, but they are physically stored in separate places. So, the first uh, step is um, supposing I have a selection which says um, find me something where uh, column C. So, let us take a select query. Select A from this relation R, where C equal to 51. So, what I would do is first I need to index C to find where the value 51 occurs in C, where, where or where all it occurs. And that index might tell me it occurs at position 93 and 27. Now, what I do is I go to the file for column A and go to position 93 and 27 and fetch those values and output them. That is all that the query required. So, I have avoided fetching most of the uh, data for uh, this relation. Um, so, in this particular example with just c equal to 51, a row store would have done fine. It is actually not such a big benefit uh, for uh, queries which retrieve a small amount of data. But queries which retrieve a lot of data, uh, let us say I aggregate on column A, uh, then reading just column A sequentially and aggregating it is more efficient than reading all the other unnecessary columns and then aggregating. So, the primary use is for decision support. And the first column stores that were built, uh, I think it started with Sybase. Uh, they had a factor of 10 performance improvement over their earlier system and a lot of people uh, were really surprised you could get such huge performance improvements. Um, of course, it does not work, uh, does not give you a factor of 10 improvement for everything, but for certain applications you could get a lot of improvement. Okay, couple more questions here. Which databases are using B tree? B, B tree? No, uh, if you look at the textbook, we differentiate between B tree, which is the original proposal, and B plus tree, which is the version we use. In industry, nobody bothers to say B plus tree; they just say B tree. But what everyone implements is uh, B plus tree. The version we gave is what is implemented by everybody, and uh, it is called B tree in the industry. They don't bother saying B plus tree. Uh, so all databases supported that I know of. Uh, there are some unrelated questions. People are asking questions about the JDBC assignment. Uh, maybe I should spend a minute on that because it's going to affect uh, today's assignment also. Uh, so one of the things which people have said is that uh, uh, error JDBC driver not found. Okay, so if you are using Eclipse as we suggested, the JDBC driver has to be put in the search path uh, for Eclipse. So, uh, if you look at the instructions for JDBC and read it carefully, uh, this is given in the instructions. We tell you that you should add the place where you place the Postgres driver that needs to be uh, told to the Eclipse uh, IDE. So, please follow those instructions carefully. If you skip one of those steps, uh, it may not work. And what some people found is that in the JDBC uh, part it worked, but when they came to servlets, uh, when they tried to deploy a servlet, at that point it did not work, uh, because they had done the first step somewhat differently. So, please follow the instructions fairly religiously uh, to ensure that the Eclipse uh, system knows where the uh, files, JDBC driver files are. Otherwise, you get these errors. Sometimes, like I said, in the plain JDBC assignment, sometimes only in the servlet assignment, which is today's assignment. So, with that, we will stop in this session and I will see you tomorrow.